Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our first lab exercise demonstrating the ArcGIS hydrology tools. This first one is a simple lab. It's just going to show you how to calculate areas from rasters. And there's a few lab exercises later on where you're going to calculate the area within the Picture Canyon watershed that meets certain criteria. In past lab exercises, we converted these rasters to polygons and then simply calculated the area of the polygons. Here we're going to learn how to get a decent estimate of the area just by counting up the raster cells and multiplying the cell count by the cell area. This method is a lot quicker than converting to polygons, but it does have a downside in that you can't calculate geodesic areas. Therefore, you need to make sure your raster is in a good coordinate system for area calculations. You know, for example, any coordinate system with equal area in the name would work well, but definitely do not use this method if your raster is in geographic coordinates. Remember, this means that if they're in latitude and longitude units, which are angular units. Now, our raster is projected into the UTM coordinate system, and our analysis area is within the UTM zone, so we're not going to suffer much error due to projection distortion. All right, so the first step is to load our Flagstaff Area DEM into our map, as we see here. Now, next, we want to figure out the cell size and the linear units. And remember our discussion of raster resolution back in the data types lecture? So to get this information, we simply open up the DEM layer properties. We go to the Source tab and look in the Raster Information section. Okay, so here are the cell size, X and Y. They're not exactly the same, but they're darn close. And at this point, we know that the cell size is roughly 28 units, X and Y. But what are these units? What are the linear units? We find this by scrolling down and going to the spatial reference section. And here's the linear unit. So now we know our raster resolution is roughly 28 meters, uh, both X and Y. So the first question is, what is the cell size in square meters? Well, we know they're in meters, so it basically is the X times the Y, right? Pretty simple. So we can do that. I'm just using the Windows calculator here. I've noticed that if you're using the Windows calculator, you need to use the scientific version. If you use the standard version, it doesn't seem to accept large numbers. So click on scientific. We just go copy this, paste it in, and multiply it by the Y value. All right, so this is the size of each raster cell in square meters. Now, next question, if we had 1,200 cells that met some criteria, what would be the total area in square meters of that region that met that criteria? All right, so it's just basically this value times 1,200, right? So times 1,200. So there would be 946,000 square meters that met that criteria. And last question, we actually convert it to something that we might be using more, more often. In this case, let's convert it to acres. So if we have 900,000 square meters, how many acres is that? So I've given you some hints. Here's the conversion factor to convert to acres. So if we wanted to convert square meters to acres, we just multiply by this value. Go back to our calculator. We multiply this times this conversion factor. Hit it. And we now know that there are 233 acres that meet that criteria. So these are pretty simple steps, but it does give a pretty quick and easy way to find out the area that meets some criteria using your raster without having to go and convert to polygons. Now this method becomes especially easy when your raster has an attribute table because raster attribute tables contain both the cell value and the number of cells that have that value. So it's really easy to get the cell count that meets your criteria. For example, I, I, I happen to know that the Hillshade raster has an attribute table, so I'm just going to pop that in here real quick as a, just to demonstrate this. So Hillshade hit Control T, it has a table. So the this means that there's a 
49 cells that have a value of 0, 16 cells that have a value of 1, etc. So maybe I want to know what is the acreage of the region within this hillshade that has a hillshade value less than 50. Just for an example, we would do the selection, select by attributes. We do value is less than 50. Hit apply. We can just hit OK to close it. So we have 50 records selected. We open up the statistics on the count field. This tells us that there is a sum of 3,287 cells that have that value. So now we know how many cells. We bring up our calculator again. We have to go back through our steps. Uh, remember what the cell size was. I happen to have it written down so I can just paste it in here. Cell size was this value times this value, which is equal to 780 square meters. Then we multiply that by 3,287. So now we know there's 2.59 million square meters on the hillshade raster that meet that criteria. And then we just had to multiply it by this conversion factor here. And we know that there's 640 acres. Huh. Awful close to almost exactly one square mile. And that's all there is to it, a really simple process. And you could probably even make it even simpler if you just added an attribute field to your, to your table that had acreage values. You could do that by just hitting the Add Field button. I'm going to call it Acres. It's going to be a double precision. We save this. Come back to here. Now, we just uh, do the calculate field on this. Uh, the, we can plug in our entire equation. That's the x and y size of the cell times the conversion factor. And all of this multiplied by the number of cells, which is count. We hit OK, and this is the acreage of each hillshade value. So if you want to know the total acreage here, we just right click on it, do statistics, and here it would be the sum right down here, 640 acres. So two ways to get to the same destination. Uh, putting another value in the attribute table may make it more convenient for future calculations. And in the hydrology lab exercises coming up, you're going to be creating rasters that have attribute tables in them. So you'll be able to use this method to easily calculate areas within the watershed that meet your criteria. All right, that should cover it. Thanks so much, everybody.